when I copy this formula with a relative range to the side, the blue range moves. But if I try the same formula and copy it down, that criteria range does not move to the next column. What do we have to put in criteria range to get this formula to work? In this video, we'll look at the offset function. Next video, we'll see how to do it with the index function. Before we use countifs, let's first learn about the offset function. The job of the offset function is to create a dynamic range. Dynamic range simply means when the formula is in this cell, it's looking at test one. But when it copies down, it moves to test two, then to test three, test four, and so on. There are five arguments. The first argument, reference. That's the starting position for our dynamic range. I select cell B11, hit the F4 key, comma. The rows argument asks the question from that starting position, how far do you want to move down or up to adjust the starting position? We don't put anything for rows because we do not want to adjust the row. Notice, for every test column, the starting position is in the same row. Comma. Now, columns is the key because remember, as the formula copies down one row and then two rows, we need to adjust the starting position by one, then by two, and so on. So as I copy the formula down in columns, I need the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. To increment numbers in formulas, we use rows with an S. Now I'm sitting in K11, so I type K dollar sign 11 colon K11. That's an expandable range where the dollar sign locks the first 11, but not the second 11. So as I copy down, that 11 will move to 12, 13, and so on. Rows, of course, counts. How many rows are there in this range from 11 to 11? 1. 11 to 12, that would be 2. Now we need to move 0 columns in this first cell. So if that's going to give me 1, 2, 3, and so on, I simply subtract 1. Comma. Now the height, the height is the same for every single column. We're going to use the rows function again, highlight the entire range, F4 to lock it, close parentheses. Now for height, we could have used count if there were always going to be numbers. Count a, which counts not empty cells. But in case there's an empty cell, I definitely want to count the rows rather than counting the numbers. So rows is perfect. The width is always going to be 1. The default is 1, so that will work. Close parentheses. And if I hit F9 on this dynamic range function offset, this gives me the first column. But when I copy the formula down, it better give me the second, then third, and so on. Control-Z. Now when I enter this, this is going to spill because I'm in Office 365 Insider Edition. If you're not in that version, you'll either get a value error or see just the first number. We want to copy it down because we want to test in the second row. F2 and then F9. Is that giving us the second column from 3 to 2.7? You betcha it is. Control-Z. Back up in the top cell, F2, we have what we want. Now in the top cell, we simply add count ifs. And in criteria range, the offset delivers a range of values, which is perfect. I come to the end, comma. Criteria 1, we're trying to count how many 4.0 grades there are for each test. F4 to lock it. Close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. We want to go to the last cell, hit F2, click inside of count ifs. On criteria range 1 and the F9 key. And does that look like our final column? Sure enough, from 3.6 to 3.5, our offset is working to create the correct dynamic range. So as we copy the formula down, the range adjusts one column at a time. All right, count ifs and offset in this video. In the next video, we'll see count ifs and the index function.